Alright. Good evening, good evening, good evening. All right. Give me just one moment. Sister Cassie, how you doing? Good to see you. tonight. So we um about thirty minutes. We'll be on for about thirty minutes. I want to share some things with you um concerning this pandemic and our posture uh, in it. Um well Minister Baron I'm I'm doing all right man. How are you today? You and Elder and the family um, wow, I don't know my iTunes password, apparently. Yeah, I'll do that later. Let's get out of iTunes all together. All right, I see, I see my bride is on, and Mother Hudson, hey, Mother Ivan, if I missed your name, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm kind of multitasking, but let's, let's, uh, let's get into this. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you uh, for today. We thank you for this evening and this opportunity to um, share uh, what you have placed on my heart um, for Word of Life and beyond, those who will be tuning in and watching later. Um, and we thank you, in Jesus' name we pray, uh, amen. I am um, I'm here um, because God laid on my heart something to share with you all about three weeks ago. And, um, you know, sometimes we just uh, kind of get stubborn a little bit, and that happens to all of us, right? And um, then you get kind of sidetracked and involved in other things, and then God sends a stern reminder. Um, and he said a stern reminder yesterday, uh, Sunday afternoon, uh, Monday morning. He said it twice. And so um, he said, I, I, this is something that I, it's imperative that I share. Now, um, about a month ago, no, two months ago, we were right at the start of this uh, pandemic. Um, I shared a thought from, hold on really quick, you all. I want to do something really fast. Hold on, I'll do it on here. Um, I shared a thought. Uh, we were dealing with the four Ps in a pandemic. Uh, it was a, a message, a sermon that I, I preached at Word of Life first Sunday, or no, our second Sunday, our second Sunday while we were um, on this stay-at-home order, um, shelter-in-place order, and um, from there, um, in this particular uh, text, um, I looked at Genesis chapter 26 in that in that message. I looked at Genesis chapter 26 uh, with a purpose, because one of the P's was provision, and the point was showing that God can... Um, God can provide and, and send provision even in the midst of a pandemic. And so um, Genesis 26 is a, is a passage of scripture that's, that's, uh, that's powerful on many fronts. But today, um, I kind of want to just deal with the fact that God is able to um, allow us to produce, enable us to produce in the midst of a pandemic. Okay. Um, so as we're going to share this and... Uh, yeah, you all, I have the hardest time remembering passwords. Go figure. Yeah, okay. So, all right, so here goes. Um, give me one minute, everyone. 
There we go. I'm back. All right. So, um, okay. So listen, um, before I get started, I want us to focus on one key scripture, right? Ephesians 3 and 20. Ephesians 3 and 20. I want us to wrap our minds around that throughout this next whole 30, 40, 35, 40 minutes, okay? Ephesians 3, 20, it says, Now all glory to God, who was able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think, okay? I need us to focus on the fact that God is able to accomplish, according to the power within us, right? Um, infinitely more uh, than we can ask or think. King James Version says, exceedingly abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. And it is also to wrap our minds around the fact that, um, in Isaiah 55, right, it says that his ways are above our ways and his thoughts are above our thoughts. I need us to wrap our minds around that, okay? Um, I need us to wrap our minds around those two facts because it. we have to understand, even before we move forward in this text, we got to understand one thing, that God is able to do um, above and beyond all of the, the thoughts that our finite minds have, okay? We tend to put God in a box. And the scripture in Ephesians 3.20 says that he's able to accomplish more than we can imagine, according to the power that works in us. So what the scripture is letting us know that we can't accomplish anything on our own. It's according to the power that works in us. Now, I believe that those that are under the sound of my voice right now have that power inside of them. And um, I also believe that uh, the worst thing you can have is, um, is ignorance concerning power. And I'll give you an example. I, I told a story about uh, shooting a shotgun and I didn't really recognize the power in that shotgun a little while ago. But then also there was a time where I had an, a BMW M5 and that thing was bad. Six gears, uh, zero to 60, and I don't know how many seconds, but it was so funny because I'm a slow driver and I'm not really the type of person that needs a sports car. But there was a friend of mine named Dale who told me, he says, look, I need you to really put some juice in the car. Trust me, if you, you floor it, it'll take you places. And so one day I thought I was grown and thought I was an advanced NASCAR driver. And I got down on Little Morongo Road here in Desert Hot Springs. I punched it and I lost control of the vehicle for a little bit. I didn't recognize the power that the car had inside of it. And so for you, I need you to understand in this pandemic, you have no weird reason to panic, no reason to fear. Because as this text unfolds in Genesis 26, you'll see that you have something inside of you that God has placed there that can help you to produce and prosper even in the midst of this pandemic. I believe that businesses will be started and should be started right now. I believe that books should be written right now. I believe that extra income opportunities should be pursued right now. While people are, 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 are afraid and people are anxious, us believers, we have an assurance. Matthew 6, Jesus says, don't worry about these little things. He says, those things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But as believers, we have an assurance to where we know that God is going to look out for us during this season. But not only look out to look out for us, I believe that he's going to prosper us, okay? So now, let's go to Genesis chapter 26. God bless you all. Uh, Minister Jackson, God bless you. Sister Starsha and Miss Donna, God bless all uh, Pastor Cooper. Let's go right into it. Genesis chapter 26, verse three. It says, verse one, it says, there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, the king of the Philistines in Gerar. And the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt. He says, live in the land which I shall tell you. Dwell in this land and I will be with you and I will bless you. Now, now two, two assurances, but look, before we get to these assurances, first of all, there was a famine in the land, right? Famine means that people were hungry, um, income and, and resources were scarce. Um, you know, it almost sounds like a pandemic, right? There's this famine in the land and yet God tells Isaac, do not leave this land, Right. He says, don't go down to Egypt where, where, there, where, where potentially there isn't a famine, where there's a prospering economy and a booming system. He said, I need you to stay right here in the midst of this famine, and I'm going to bless you and be with you. So two assurances for those of us that are in the midst of this pandemic and we're worried. Two assurances. He says, one, I will be with, I'll be there with you. He'll be right here in the middle of this pandemic with us. And wherever he is, there's provision. Wherever, the, wherever he is, he has his hand on his there's, there's guaranteed provision wherever God is, right? But then the second thing he says, and I will bless you. So those of us that are in this pandemic, God is pulling you to birth something. God is pushing you to do something. God is, is, is to come out of this pandemic 
um, greater than you ever have been, better than you ever have been. And you're a little bit worried because you hear the voice of the Lord saying, I need you to start the business. And then you hear the other voice of the enemy saying, well, it's a pandemic. It's a it's a recession. Now's not the time. You hear the voice of the Lord saying, now is the time for you to go to school. And because after this pandemic is over, I'm going to position you to do great things. And you hear the other side saying, yeah, but the resources are tight and all this kind of stuff. God is saying, look, I need you to trust me, right? Even in the famine in the land, I'm going to be with you and I'm going to bless you, okay? So this is how we get to uh, that blessing part, okay? Isaac, now mind you, um, I can imagine the flesh saying, I want to get out of here. I mean, even sometimes with me, when I think about all the things that California are going through, and I'm like, I just want to move to Texas, right? Because at least in Texas, um, you know, the, the economy seems to be picking back up and all this. And I, I don't want to get into um, open the economy versus leave the economy shut. But there's so many things that happen in California sometimes that frustrate me. I'm like, I'm ready to go. And God is saying, I need you to stay right here in that land because I'm going to be with you in that land. And if I'm with you, I'm going to, there's provision wherever I am. And I'm going to bless you in that land. And so... You're asking, okay, so I hear what God is saying, but what do, what do I do? How do I get to the point where I can be blessed in the middle of um, a famine, in the middle of a pandemic? How can I, what can, how can I, how can I get there? Well, Isaac, uh, verse 6, it says that Isaac dwelt in that land. He dwelt right there. He didn't move. He didn't there to dwell. He literally sat. He established roots. He uh, you know, he, he got to, he just figured this is home. This is where God has me. And I asked a question on Sunday. I said, we can, we can trust God when it's time to move sometimes because that's a new season. We get a new opportunity. And for me, if God was to say, move across the country, I'd be excited, right? Not that I don't love Desert Hot Springs, but I'm like, oh, that's a new opportunity. But can't we trust God when he says, sit still? Can we trust God when he says, I don't want you to leave. I want you to sit right here, right where you are. So imagine Isaac thinking there's a famine in the land. I'm just going to go down to Egypt. And God said, no, I need you to sit still right where you are. And so Isaac dwelt there. Verse 6, uh, Genesis 26, he dwelt there in, 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 that, in that land of a pandemic. But he didn't just sit there. Because it's one thing to have faith that God will bless you in the middle of a pandemic if you just stay where he told you to stay. It's another action, right? Now, here it is. Here it is. Uh, faith that works is dead, according to the book of James. So you can sit here and say in the middle of this pandemic, I know God's going to see me through. I know God's going to bless me in my household. I just know it because I know it and I know the word says it and I just believe. However, faith without works is dead, meaning that there's going to have to be some type of practice beyond your profession of that faith. All right. And so Isaac, in verse 12, it says he sowed into the land. He sowed into the land. The word sow is pretty interesting because it denotes uh, pregnancy, impregnating, sowing a seed into something and impregnating the land. And so Isaac sowed into the land. Um, and if you think of, if you think of, um, a pregnancy, uh, a man gives of himself and, and, and plants a seed, right? And so, and so he gave of himself and he sowed into that particular land. And the question is, why don't we sow? Why don't we sow? Why don't we sow in times of a pandemic? Why are we afraid of sowing in a pandemic? Well, there, there's three things that, that I kind of uh, got in prayer. One, we're afraid that we won't have enough. Some of us get really stingy in times of pandemic because uh, the old saying says, it's me, my four, and no more, right? And we don't want to release that seed because it's a pandemic. It's a recession. I've been furloughed. I might get laid off. My job may not come back. And, and, and when we can kind of stingy and close fisted, right? But if God is telling you to stay in the land, he's not telling you to just sit still. He's actually saying, I want you to dwell in that land, not just sit there, not just take up roots, but sow into that land. Second reason why I found we don't sow, because it doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't make sense. It, it makes no sense for me to sow into a land where there's a famine. Um, I don't have unlimited resources. So why would I continue to sow into a land that has a famine there? And then thirdly, why we don't sow, uh, we have a fear. We have a fear um, that there is there is there is. Um, there's no room, there's no market for what it is that God has placed inside of us. Right? God may have told you to sow into the land right now and write that book. And you're babbling with him in your mind saying, no one wants to read my story. And God is saying, look, I called you to do this work right now in the midst of this pandemic. And isn't it funny for the, for the creatives, the book writers and the songs and the, and, the, and the singers and the writers, the psalmists and all that kind of stuff. If you think about it, this is an ideal time for you to put that product and put that, that vision out there. 
Why? Because everything is closed, right? You have everyone's captivated attention right in the palm of your hand with their smartphone. So maybe this is the time for you, right? And so the Bible says Isaac sowed into that land, verse 12, then he sowed into that land. Verse 6, he dwelt in the land. Verse 12, he sowed into the land. Now let's talk about what sowing is. I mean, there's there's several types that, you know, obviously, um, you know, we think of sowing, we're always thinking of giving to ministry or giving to the less fortunate. Yeah, that's that's sowing, right? Um, uh, sowing seed in the people. With the, yeah, that's sowing as well, all right? Um, but, but this particular sowing, in this context, um, it comes as a result of a gift or an idea that God has placed in your head and it's been there for a while. Some of us have had these ideas and these visions to pursue for a long time, but life has gotten in the way, right? Uh, picking the kids up from school, taking them to basketball practice, getting them to football practice, ballet, volleyball, all that kind of stuff schedules vary. And then, you know, by the time we get home, we want, we, we have a desire to start working on this vision, but we're so exhausted from the week that just happened. And God is saying, now I need you to understand that I want you to be fruitful in producing this pandemic. So I have allowed things to slow down just so you can start to sow with that gift that I've put inside of you. All right now, I understand that rest um, is, is important. Rest is a discipline. Mark chapter six, look at it. Mark, Jesus told them in verse 31, Mark chapter six, he said, I need you all to rest because y'all have worked so hard that you've got to take care of yourselves. But, um, you know, um, how do I say this? Uh, Proverbs six talks about how, how the lazy person uh, conducts themselves versus the hardworking ant. And God is saying in this pandemic, yes, I want you to rest. In this time of downtime, I want you to get your rest, but I also want you to be fruitful. I always I also want you to sow into the land. And what does sowing mean? It means taking whatever the gift that he put in your hand, whatever the vision that he's given you over the course of these years, now he's given you the time. He's given you the ability uh, through scheduling to be able to say, now I can pour into that. I believe that after this, and I believe that when this is over, some of us are going to be in position to change the world around us simply because we're going to sow right now you see here's the thing so many people want to wait until the economy is open to start going to work to start pitching your idea to start marketing your services yeah i'll wait till the economy is open well look at the disadvantage there when you is open. You're now competing with everyone who's now reopening their businesses, reopening and and and, re and rewriting their books and reproducing music and all that. How about you do it now? When God God is saying, do it now. When everything's at a standstill, we're all on an even playing field right now. What I love about this pandemic, uh, a wise man told told me on a training call, a mentor of mine told me three weeks ago. He said the shutdowns in the, around the nation, we're all on evil uh, even playing field now. We're all even playing field. Whether you have 5,000 members at your church or five, we're all in the same boat right now because we all have the same platform that we have to use, which is the Internet. Right. And so right now, while we have this advantage, right, right now we have this slowdown. Now is the time to start to sow into the land. And when I say sow into the land, I mean sow into this season right now. I'm not asking you to sow money. I'm asking you to sow whatever the thing is that God has given you to do. Business idea, that book, that 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 album, that that um, that 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 thing, that project you want to complete with your family, that ministry that God is birthing you to, that stirring you to start. Now is the time. So into this season with it, right? And so, I believe that after this, some are going to look back and say, "While others struggled, I prospered and I thrived," simply because I sowed into the land this season. The seeds you plant now. Uh, they can prosper long after this. And you look back and say, wow, I'm in this position where I am now because I trusted the voice of God and I sowed into the land while there was a famine. A wise man, another mentor of mine, he posted something so profound, it shook me to the core. Dr. Jeff Walker is an amazing man of God. He is a true apostle. Uh, he is a true bishop. He is a true man of God. He, he's a shepherd, shepherd. And he posted something last week that, that really just stuck with me. He says, long before Zacchaeus climbed a sycamore tree to see Jesus, somebody had the sight to plant the seed. I want you to think about that, right? The, the miracle and the, 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 pre, you know, the, the part that I preach was the fact that Zacchaeus, the little self Zacchaeus climbed that sycamore tree and just so he can see Jesus, right? But something happened before he was able to scale that tree. Somebody had the foresight to plant a seed. You never know that what you sow right now in this pandemic, in the middle of this famine, you never know how that can impact you and your family and your descendants in the future. Not just you and yours, but those that are connected to you and those that are not even connected to you that will just benefit because of your obedience to God right now. Right? And so he, verse 6, it says that he dwelt. He didn't leave. He stayed where there was a famine. Verse 12.
but he uh, uh, he sowed into the land. And then verse 12 continues to say, and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. See, I, I need us to really catch this because it says that he sowed into the land and then he reaped a hundredfold um, in the same year and the Lord blessed him. In the same year. In the same year. I know that the world wants us to believe that we should just throw 2020 away and cancel 2020. And I even made a joke before. I said, when can we have watch night service? This is getting ridiculous. I know that 2020 looks like Jumanji, new levels every month. I know that there's something that's going on. And I know it seems like 2020 can be a throwaway year. But Isaac sowed in the famine. And in the same year, God blessed him a hundredfold, which lets me know that although 2020 has had its struggles, although 2020 has been uh, contentious, although 2020 has been kind of frustrating, it's not over yet. God can bless us in the same year. See, this is where we really have to wrap our minds around and understand God is not throwing this year away. And I know that we're almost six months into this year. We're almost halfway through this year. And some of us are frustrated because what started with such promise on watching declare a perfect vision on 2020. And, and this is going to be the year. But I get it. I get it. I get it. Because because at some point at every new year, you want to believe that this is your year. But it's still time for it to be your year. So what? January, February, March, April and May have been horrendous by, by, by many accounts. We still have June, July, August, all the way through December. I into the land, into the famine, into the pandemic, and he reaped a hundredfold in the same year. Imagine if you take this tonight and you start to sow into that which God called you to sow into. And then by November, you look back and you see that you, you actually reap back a hundred times what you put into the season. It gets better though. Verse 13, it says the to prosper. And he continued prospering until he became very prosperous. <laughs> Not only did he reap a hundredfold harvest, but then he became prosperous. And I love how the NLT version says he continued prospering and became very prosperous. To continue prospering means that, that prospering is a verb, which means that everywhere you go, everything you touch is just prospering. And I believe that God is positioning the some of us right now to prosper. When this is over, some of us, everything we touch is just going to turn to gold. Some of us, everywhere we go, this favor of God is going to be in our life. Because we obeyed in this season. We didn't tuck tail and hide in the corner when things got a little bit tight. We kept serving. We kept sowing. We, kept, we didn't get up and we, we didn't focus our attention on something else. And, and, and it really, we, we look at um, when he says, don't go to Egypt, stay here. We look at that as something as geographical. But what if, what, think about this. What if God is saying, don't allow your mindset to shift to something else. I need you to stay right here where I am. Because for some of us, what happens is when things don't add up, we start to try and figure out things in our own. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. It says, lean not into your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him. Now, what if this is what happens? I know it's happened with me before and I'm not prone to it. Uh, I'm not um, I'm not. Uh, 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 what's the word? Um, uh, I'm not. Uh, uh, <laughs> it can happen to me again. Right. And so I know what happens. What happens is we wait on God and we start to wait on God to move and, and God doesn't move quick enough and things start to get worse and we take matters into our hands. So what if for you, it wasn't a geographical stay here? What if it was a spiritual stay here? What if it was a, a mental stay here? Meaning that I know things are tough, but stay right here and watch me work. Don't move anywhere. Some of us right now know people or with the now with bad marriages and you want to pack up and leave what if god is saying don't leave i know there's a famine in your marriage but if you stay here and sow into it i will prosper it a hundredfold some of us are getting ready to walk away from jobs because people are getting on our nerves and they're good jobs but we just can't stand the people what if god is saying look don't leave the job i know there's a famine in morale at the job at your employees but if you sit here long enough and just stay here long enough continue to sow into this job, I'm going to prosper you a hundredfold. Some of us are getting ready to throw in the towel because the doctors are saying that our bodies are sick and our blood work isn't right and we're just getting frustrated. But what if God is saying, don't quit, don't change your disposition, don't change your posture. Stay right here, sow right here into the season and watch me prosper your health a hundredfold in the same year. Meaning that before 2020 ends, God has to that you're about to put forth right now. Meaning that before the clock turns to 2021 at midnight, 1159 to midnight, God has to honor. I, I, this is what I believe because he's the same God yesterday, today and forevermore. This is what I firmly believe. I believe that God is going to honor the word and say, look, if you just if you're crazy enough just to trust me, 
and not to leave and not to get fidgety and not to bounce and not and not to shake and not to and not to uh, uh, lean into your own understanding in the middle of this famine. If you're crazy enough to believe me and sit here and just sow into the land, sow into this situation, sow into this season, I'm going to honor it 100 fold. But not only that, in verse 13 and 14, it says that not only was he uh, um, uh, reap, not only did he reap a hundredfold, but he was prospered and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had the flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. Man, ain't this crazy? In the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of a famine, God raised somebody up to bless them uh, <laughs> tremendously. Meaning that God can still make, and I know people don't like hearing this word when it comes to the ministry and the church. And, and trust me, this has nothing to do with work. This has everything to do with whoever wants to receive this right now. Meaning that even in the middle of a pandemic, when it appears that the stock market is crashing and the 401ks are going crazy, he can make a millionaire. He can make a billionaire just off the seeds that you've sown. I just believe it. So the man began to prosper and everywhere that he went, everything that he touched became prosperous everywhere that he went everything that he touched became prosperous so much and this is where it kind of takes the time because i need us to understand that not everybody is going to be happy when god starts to prosper you I need us to understand that not everyone's going to be excited when God begins to prosper you. I need us to wrap our minds around the fact that not everyone is going to want to high five you and tell of the goodness of Jesus and the grace of your life when God starts to prosper you. The quickest way to find out how many enemies you have is to sit back and let God prosper the work that you, the, the seeds that you sow. Because I promise you, you'll start to find out that you had enemies that you never knew that you had in the first place. And then you have enemies that will raise up who never had the courage to raise up in the first place. Look at verse 14 if you don't believe me. It says he had possessions of flocks and, and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. And it says, so the Philistines envied him. You see that for yourself? Genesis 26, 14. The Philistines envied him. Envy will rise. People will become envious of your harvest without even regard to your sowing. People will say, who she thinks she is? Who do you think he is? They think they all that. No, it's not even that. I sold all that. See, here's the thing. You can't, you can't judge and critique my harvest if you don't know the labor of the seed that I had to put in. And this is what's going to happen. People are going to, right now, in this pandemic, if I dare you, I dare you to, not that I don't tell too much, but I dare you to cast a vision right now to somebody close to you, to people. Put it on your Facebook page. Say, look, because Isaac sowed into the land in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of a famine, I dare you to just start declaring, you know what, in the middle of this pandemic, in the middle of this famine, I am going to launch out and I'm going to do this. And I guarantee you, people will, <laughs> and if you, if, you, if you really want, if you really laugh, do it on video. Because the video will show you how many people watched it, but their reaction will show you how many people liked it or loved it, right? So you might have three likes and loves and, four, and, and 400 views. That means you got about 350 people that are sitting there sucking their teeth that you're thinking that you're crazy. And that's okay because Noah seemed crazy until it rained, did he not? Abraham seemed crazy until Isaac was born. Even David seemed crazy until Goliath fell. What I'm trying to tell you is step out on faith and trust God even when people think that you're crazy. People will tell you, you need to leave. You need to jump. You need to do this. But God is saying, I need you to sit still. Can you trust God enough to sit still and dwell in this situation and not just dwell in it, but sow into it? It takes a whole nother level of trust and maturity to sow into a situation that you just don't like. It takes a whole nother level of commitment to sow into a situation that's making you uncomfortable. It takes a whole nother level of faith to sow into a situation where you just really feel like you want to throw in the towel. And God is saying, be still and know that I'm God for Psalm 46. He says, all the things are crumbling around you. Just sit here and be still. But don't just sit still. I want you to actually sow into this land. Isaac very well could have just said, I'm just going to sit back and be still and just wait on God to provide. But Isaac got up and he went and he sowed into the land. And because of his sowing into the land, the Bible says that God prospered him and he honored his, gave him harvest from his seed. He reaped 100 fold in the same year, which, like I said earlier, lets me know that it's not too late for you to sow a seed into this year and for God to honor that seed 100 fold. 
So it's we'll see, and, it, and it, for those that have just jumped on, you know, people jump on when when preachers are talking. They hear so a seat, they're thinking, okay, here comes the cash app. That's not what this is all about, not at all, right? Right? That's not what this, that's not what this is. Isaac sold into the land, and we'll find out later what he sold. And I'm gonna give you a pre, I'll kind of give you a preview. He sold with his hands. He sold into the land. He sold with the what's in your hands, your gift. Remember in Exodus four, before Moses went to Pharaoh, he says, I can't go to Pharaoh. I have issues. And God said, What's in your hand, right? So there's things that are in our hands. That, that we naturally do better than, than other people. God is saying, this is the season to take that gift and sow into the land right now. By land, I mean the situation. Sow into, the, sow into it right now. I dare you to start a business. I dare you to write a business plan and start a business right now. All right? And just so you know, I do, um, I, you know, I practice what I preach. I don't, I'm not one that says, that tells you to do something that I don't do. In this pandemic, in this season right now, where everyone else, where all other people were going crazy, what has happened? I've, I've launched a podcast in this season right now. I've enrolled back in school in this season right now. We're getting ready to launch a small business in this season right now. Why? Because I take this text to heart. If God has said, if you just trust me enough not to move, not to, you know, like a, like a tree planted by, by the water, don't be moved, not to move in the middle of this pandemic, not to allow what's going on in the news to sway you um, from, from believing that I can do exceedingly abundantly, the scripture that we read at first, Ephesians 3.20, above all things, he said, if you can just sit here and plant on that word and, and not only just sit here, but sow into this situation, I will bless you a hundredfold before this year is over. That's what it says in the word. I'm not making this up. And so as a result of him trusting God and sowing into the land, he prospered and continued to prosper. I told you all that word continued. It's, it's a verb. He was everywhere that he went, whatever he was touching was just starting to prosper. God is saying when this is over, when this pandemic ends, what's going to happen is those that trust him enough to sow into this land, that yeah, you're not going to be able to have room for the stuff he's going to do for you. When I say have room, I don't talk about a closet of shoes. I'm saying that you're not going to even have the words to express how grateful you're going to be for him because he's going to continue to open doors. He's going to continue to move mountains. He's going to continue to touch bodies. And, and yes, he's going to continue to do the tangible things because you trusted him right now, right? Prosperity is not always financial. Sometimes God can just bless you with peace. Ain't that something? And so, what I loved about the people who opposed it, the Bible never really says that he got into it with them. As a matter of fact, as we get further into it, he just let it slide. He let it go. Reminded of Nehemiah in chapter 6 when, when, when the, 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 the loud mouse were trying to, to distract him and uh, he says, look, I can't deal with you. I'm doing a great work. You, if, you're really go, if you're really going to go after whatever it is God is telling you to go after right now, you're going to have to put some blinders on and put some big headphones on and not listen to the voices around you that could be negative. Because if they can just engage you in conversation, they can get you to waste your time. And time is valuable right now because this pandemic is not going to last forever. So this, the pandemic is starting to wind down. I firmly believe that. It's starting to wind down. And as it starts to wind down, it means that the clock is starting to wind. You ever seen an hourglass and when all the sand goes out? Yeah, right? The time's up. I believe that as the hourglass is, is starting to diminish in sand, this pandemic is starting to, starting to end. So you have to act now. Do it now. Whatever it is he's called you to do, do it right now. Don't wait. Do it right now. Right? Most of us don't have um, jobs to go to right now anyway. Do it now. Do it right now. Well, I got these kids at the house. Well, they all, if you're in Palm Springs Unified, they all have Chromebooks. Get them in the corner to do their classwork, and you pour into what God has called you to pour into. Right? So he sowed into the land, and he had an ability to um, dig wells, and him and his men. And digging wells for him could be doing hair for you. Digging wells for him could be writing poetry for you. Doing, digging wells for him could be um, uh, writing books or, or whatever, whatever digging wells is. It could be cooking for you, right? Right. Get out your shovel and start to dig, you know, with the gift that you have. But I want us to want us to look at these these next few verses. And I'm going to get out of here because I'm honored to be able to teach our teens tonight. Um, uh, they're waiting for me and I'll be there in 10 minutes. So I'm honored for that. But. It says, uh, the Philistines had stopped up all their wells, which the father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham and his father, and they filled them up with earth. So Abimelech said to Isaac, go away from us. You're just much mightier than we are. What happened was Isaac, back in that day, water was like currency. And whenever you had a well, that was like 
you know, you were doing big things when you had a well. And so Isaac had this well and those Philistines, those people that opposed him and didn't like the fact that he prospered, they came and put dirt on top of the well so he couldn't access the water. Now, now that's like a sign of war. That's like, that's like they're saying, okay, that's an act of war. They really want to go to battle. And isn't it funny how people will, will, will despise your prosperity that much to where they just want to go to war with you, right? Won't want to ask you how you're doing it. Won't, won't want to ask you to help them with their own vision. They just ready to go to war. They ready to go, they want to go to war. And so Isaac, I, and the funny, and the great thing about this, Isaac never, ever, ever warred over anything because when you know that you have a grace in your life, you don't have to fight for anything. If God did it before, he'll do it again. And so Isaac left. The well that he was, the, they, they filled it up with dirt. By all accounts, that should have been a time to fight, but he left. I don't know who I'm speaking to right now, but stop fighting. This ain't the season to fight. Stop looking for a fight. Stop, stop responding. Stop reacting. Just move on, right? Verse 17, it says, Isaac departed there, Pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar. Now he left from a place that was in a famine to the valley of Gerar. The valley of Gerar was a desolate place. Um, by all accounts, it says it was at the very end of the desert. So if you live if you live here in Southern California, just think Amboy on the way to Vegas, the very end of the desert, right? And he dwelt there. Now he moves from a place where there's a famine to a place where there's dry, nothing but dry desert. In verse 18, he dug again wells of water and had dug that he dug in the days of his father. It says that in that dry place, he dug again and he found water again. See, when God honors a seed, that seed is honored wherever you go. He left from the land because he had to get, he was forced out of there and he went to a dry land. But because he stepped out and trusted God in the middle of the pandemic, even where he was, he dug again and he found water again. Two things happen. He digs two wells. The first well he digs, a bunch of herdsmen show up and they say, this is our water. This is our well. And they quarreled with him. And so he moved on. He just named that one quarrel. I ain't got time to fight. That's just, that's, that's just the quarrel well. And then he went on again. He dug another well. And they came and another group of men came and argued with him. And he said, y'all can just have it. I'm not, you know, I don't want to argue. And so the Bible finally says he went on one more time and he dug another well. And nobody came to bother him. And he named that well Rehoboth, which means the Lord has made room for us. The whole purpose of um, God leading me to do this for the last 35 minutes was to let you know that God is setting you up to where room can be made for you. You may be thinking that my gift doesn't have a market, that my idea doesn't have a market. You may be thinking that. My abilities, there's, there's, and I, and it's so funny because one thing we tell our daughter all the time, she's very good artistically. She draws and she's, she's got this great imaginative mind and we keep telling her, all right, baby girl, one day you're going to make some money off that. You know, we, we keep planting that seed in her because we want her to keep going and keep trying because eventually she's going to get bold enough to say, okay, mom, dad, I'm ready to start my business and we're going to be right there to push it. And the whole purpose of the, of, of doing that is because she's going to see at some point in her life that even though you may have doubted yourself, the Lord is making room for you. There is people waiting for your gift. Do you realize that there are people mentioning your name and you've never walked in the room yet? There are people who are talking and discussing and, and there's, there's people that are looking for somebody that does what you do and they're just waiting on you to do it. But because we're in this pandemic, we're in the middle of this famine, we want to say, okay, we'll just wait until this is all over. We'll wait till there's some stability in the economy. We'll wait until, no, 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 no. Genesis 26, chapter one through, verses one through three, for those who just got on there was a famine in the land. There was a pandemic in the land. And the Lord told Isaac, don't move. I need you to stay right here. Don't go to Egypt. Don't go. Stay right here. And I'm going to be with you and I'm going to bless you. And the Bible says Isaac stayed and he dwelt there. But in dwelling there, he sowed into the land. What does sowing into the land mean? He went to work in that land. He started looking to produce in that land. And because he was crazy enough to trust God in the middle of a pandemic, because he was crazy enough to trust God to work in a land when there was a when there was a pandemic and a famine there. The Bible says that God uh, gave him a harvest a hundred times over for what he had sown in the same year. Like I told you all, which means that if you trust God and step out now before this year is over, God is going to honor that seed. And you will. Re and this is what I, and I just believe it, because if he can do it for Isaac, I know he'll do it for us. And so Isaac started to get prospered. And he, got, he got real successful. He just he was a walking uh, favor. He just walked around and just favor all over the place and to the point where people started to despise him for it. And you're walking into a season because of your obedience where you're going to prosper so much that people are going to despise you for it. But uh, hear me. Don't argue. Don't fuss. Keep doing what you've been doing. 
If you read in the scripture, Isaac never stopped to argue with anyone. He just kept going, kept going. Even when people were still in his ideas, <laughs> even when people were still in his hard work and taking claim to it, he didn't argue because he understood that the grace of God in my life is so great that even if you want to snatch this from me, I don't have to fight you for it because I can get grace again for the next assignment. So Isaac kept going to the point where he outlasted the hate. He outlasted the, um, those that wanted to see him not prosper. And God made room for him. And so God wants to make room for you on well, tonight. God wants to make room for you in this season. God wants to know how many of you are crazy enough to launch that big idea that I gave you when things are going well in the middle of this pandemic. God wants to know how crazy are you? Are you willing to step out right now in the middle of this pandemic and launch that crazy idea? And if you do, and you're willing to sit here and not shift from the idea, sit here and sow into this land this season right now, I will prosper you. I will honor that. I have to run. Uh, <laughs> mentor mine, he says, I'm not out of message, but I'm out of minutes. And I, that, that resonates with me right now. So not out of message, but I'm out of minutes. So look, I'm going to pray. And if you have any questions, any comments, please uh, comment below. And I will, um, I will get back to each and every last one of them after I teach this team Bible study. All right. So look, let's pray. God, we thank you for this time tonight. We thank you for um, allowing us to be an encouragement to some. God, we pray that some get the courage and the wherewithal to step out, uh, regardless of fear, and start to sow into this land right now, God. We believe that you've called us to do a great work in the midst of a pandemic. So while the world is panicking, we're going to be sowing. While the world is frustrated, we're going to be fruitful, God. And while the world is waiting to become happy, we're going to walk in harvest, God. And we just thank you for it because the grace in our lives that you're giving, that you're equipping us to do this work will cause us, if we're obedient, to be prosperous even in the midst of this. And God, we glorify you right now. We thank you. And we just praise your holy name in Jesus' name. Amen. Look, I love you all. I have to go. I will be uh, back in about 45 minutes to an hour. If you have any questions, leave them below and I'll answer them before I go to bed tonight. Okay. Grace and peace to you. Thank you all for tuning in, by the way. Love y'all.